Welcome to the ICE podcast, supported by the U.S. Soybean Export Council, an initiative to enable the coal chain industry of India to be future ready. Hello and welcome, dear listener. You have tuned in to the ICE podcast on coal chain technology. I am Manjunath, and today let us take a look at the stakeholders in a coal chain. Who is a stakeholder? Obviously, the one who has a stake in it. However, it's important to say that a stakeholder is the one who benefits from an ecosystem to which he is connected in any which way. So, in a cold chain, there are several stakeholders. We need to understand their position, contribution, and the benefits that they get out of using and supporting the cold chain in their business processes. If we go from the point of origin, of a cold chain towards the end point of the cold chain, the first stakeholder is the product and then the producer and then the aggregators, distributors, retailers and consumers. So let's take a look at each of them. The product. The product needs a cold chain as soon as it is harvested or processed and packed. Cold chain parameters like temperature, relative humidity, airflow, etc. are the demands of each product. These demands differ from product to product and they need to be understood clearly in order to appreciate the stakeholder. We will get to hear from other experts on each of these product demands, their requirements of storage and transportation in a series of succeeding podcasts. The producers are big stakeholders in the cold chain since an unbroken cold chain offers them the ability to maintain the freshness and quality of their products for a longer time so that they can sell them to a wider and distant lucrative markets of processors as well as consumers. A robust unbroken cold chain has direct economic benefits to the producers. The next set of stakeholders are the aggregators. They fundamentally aggregate products from various producers and then leverage their marketing and value added service capabilities to sell this produce either in the raw form or as a value added form to consumers as well as to processors. They leverage the cold chain to ensure higher return and better productivity for their business. Then come the distributors. Distributors are large trading companies who may have a diverse portfolio of products like dairy, poultry, fruits, vegetables, pharmaceuticals, etc. They need the cold chain to ensure highest quality and shelf life since the products are likely to stay at the distributor's place for a longer period and the the distributors are in the middle of the cold chain from the journey from the producer to the consumer. And then finally come the retailers. The retailers are the consumer facing stakeholders of a cold chain. They are the point of sale to consumers. For them, the cold chain infrastructure is so important that their sales literally depends on the quality of the cold chain and the display of merchandise in the refrigerated display cabinets and shelves. Without these, there is no way to attract consumer eyeballs to the delicious frozen and chilled foods, be it fresh broccoli, be it ice creams, fish fillets or succulent chicken meat. And finally, the consumer. The consumer will need a cold chain infrastructure in the form of refrigerators at their point of consumption, either in their homes or in their eateries and restaurants. Unless these are there at these points, uh, the consumer cannot enjoy the freshness and the mouthfeel of the products that have been so well preserved through the unbroken cold chain from the producer to the retailer. So listeners, You are all definitely cold chain stakeholders as consumers. Think of this when you lick your next butterscotch ice cream cone. And have a great day. Thank you.